while E. coli is considered a typical bacterium with one circular chromosome, some strains possess a number of extra chromosomal loops of DNA known as plasmids. And there is variation from one strain of E. coli to the next. Some possess plasmids, some don't. Some have taken up DNA from other sources through lateral gene transfer, which is why some strains can cause food poisoning, while typical strains of E. coli do not. Some are useful in biotechnology because plasmids have been added to them, which may contain genes from other organisms, including humans. And in the wild, different strains of E. coli can be extremely diverse. In fact, only about 20% of all E. coli genes are found in every single strain of E. coli. The Vibrio, which causes the disease cholera, possesses not one circular chromosome, but two circular chromosomes. Some bacteria possess three circular chromosomes. Not all bacterial chromosomes are circular, don't you know? Some can be linear, similar to those you see in eukaryotes. Agrobacterium can actually possess one circular chromosome, one linear chromosome, both of these may be having two million base pairs or so, and then a number of plasmids, don't you know? One of these plasmids actually can be injected into plant cells which is why agrobacterium can cause tumorous growth in plant galls and is a serious plant pathogen. Borrelia possesses one linear chromosome, unlike the circular chromosomes in most bacteria, and a number of plasmids, 21 of them typically. Some of them are linear and some of them are circular. Epulopsicium has thousands of copies, perhaps even tens or hundreds of thousands of copies of its chromosome, making it polyploid. This allows it to be so big.